Every morning in the wild, a gazelle awakens. One thing is for sure for the gazelle that day, as every other. She must run faster than the fastest lion. If she cannot, she will be killed and eaten. Every morning, a lion awakens. For the lion too, one thing is certain. This day and every day, he must run faster than the slowest gazelle. Whether fate names you a gazelle or a lion is of no consequence. It is enough to know that with the rising of the sun, you must run, and you must run faster than the day before for the rest of your days, or you will die. We all have to run. Run the race of life. To survive in the wild, you have to fight. The winner might be the biggest, but with some animals, it might be the most agile or the most curious. To survive as a wolf, you need teamwork, speed, and intelligence. To win the battles on the African plains, it's the biggest set of horns. And to be the top carnivore in this world, you need big teeth and a fierce temperament. Keeping constantly on the move is just one way to win the race of life. All across the world, there is another prevailing skill for staying alive. It is a skill and an art that works in every ecosphere, from the jungle to the open sea. The animals who are masters of this art are often top of the food chain. They get first access to food and have almost no natural predators. They are strong survivors from the icy lands of the Arctic to the sun-baked grasses of the equator. They can be found on isolated islands, cut off from the rest of the world, and among the crowded national parks of Africa. These animals are supremely designed for fighting. From the dogs of the sea to wolves, bears, and buffalo, they are the great warriors in the race of life. The mountains of America, Asia, and Europe are home to a giant mammal with a fierce nature. He hunts by day in the forests and rivers. His diet includes meat, berries, nuts, and fish. Full-grown males can reach 750 kilos in weight. They have large teeth and an exceptional sense of smell. Some species come to a special place at a special time every year. Bears. This one has come to the river for an event that tests the athletic skills of predator and prey to their limits. Bears are distantly related to dogs, but they have long bodies, stocky legs, and they're much, much bigger. This river is a major highway for a very special fish. Every year, Pacific salmon race along these waters to breed. They have to leap enormous hurdles and avoid being eaten by bears. These salmon have been at sea for two years. Now they're returning upriver to where they were born. This adult grizzly bear has been practicing her fishing techniques for several seasons. Victory. 
Despite the huge quantity of fish, catching a slippery salmon is a major challenge. The salmon run is at its peak in June and July, the Northern Hemisphere summer. These fish are an essential protein source for the bear and her family. When the weather changes, there will be almost no food around. She needs to eat as much as she can if she's going to live through the long and icy northern winter. This is a race to the death for fish and bear. Only the fastest and strongest salmon will get past the line of bears. And only the bears who pack in lots of protein will be strong enough to survive when the snow closes in. Bears start training to be warriors from almost the day they are born. These two cubs spend most of their waking hours playing. But they are developing the skills they need to be good fighters. They will need to win many fights if they are going to survive as adults. Bears don't just fight for food. They fight to defend territory and to win a mate. They also fight to protect their families. This young grizzly male is looking for his own territory. Bears are not very sociable. When they're not breeding, they usually live alone. But this territory has already been claimed. This time, the fight between the two bears is serious. If you have no territory, you have no food. In the wild, injury is as good as a death sentence. The new bear is too small. He's not strong enough to win this time. The dominant bear has won the race of life today. The younger bear must come back when he's big enough to take on this dominant male. This adult female has just made a major kill and she's not about to share it. A wolf has picked up the scent of the kill. He's also hungry. The wolf is wary as he approaches the carcass. He's no match for the size and strength of the bear. The wolf must be very hungry. He could easily be killed in a conflict. Bears do not fear any other animal. They are apex predators. If the bear was injured, then the wolf might stand a chance. But not today. Even a pack of wolves would think twice before taking on a full-grown grizzly. Like all her kind, she has become a well-trained warrior. She will need to fight every day to survive alone. Competition is tough where the land meets the sea. Food can be plentiful, but that attracts a whole host of predators, and somewhere safe to live is often hard to find. Creatures who choose to live here must learn to fight for their share. Sea lions are perfectly adapted to live in this boundary zone, hunting in the water and resting on dry land. They live in vast groups comprising males and females, young and old. Some colonies have over a thousand individuals. To hold all this territory, sea lions have become intelligent and fierce fighters. There are seven different species of sea lion. Despite their adaptation for life in the sea, they all have a fur coat and small ears. This adult female is off on a hunt. Once in the water, she's really in her element. She's capable of speeds of up to 40 kilometers an hour. And she can dive down 250 meters. She's looking for a tasty squid, an octopus, or maybe some herring or hake. It's party time. Now they've been fed, it's time to head for home. Sea lions have two major predators who won't be far away, sharks and orcas. So they're racing back to the beach for their own safety.
Back at base, the race of life is not over, especially for the bulls. It's breeding season, and only the best fighters will be given the chance to mate. The smaller bull is an intruder. The larger sea lion is fighting to maintain his role as the dominant male. This one has already been in a fight, but he's still up for more. Bull sea lions fight each other only during breeding season. For the rest of the time, they live together peacefully with the colony. Most of the sea lions in the colony have now returned from the hunt. But the beach is not as safe as it looks. A pod of orcas have come for dinner. And they enjoy eating sea lion pups. The sea lions flee for the shallows. The pup was too slow, and he has lost his race of life today. No one knows for sure why the whales throw the pups around, perhaps to stun them, or maybe even as a game. The orcas visit this beach every year during sea lion breeding season. It's a perfectly balanced fight for survival. Once the pups get too big, the orcas will leave, and enough sea lions will survive to sustain the colony in its communal race of life. One warrior has played more parts in myths and legends than any other. He's portrayed as a dark creature of the forest, a figure of nightmares and horror stories. He hunts in packs and howls at the moon. Animals take flight when they sense his approach. The wolf. Wolves have lived close to humans for almost 15,000 years. They came close to our campfires in prehistoric times and have served us as hunters, guardians, and companions ever since. The wolf is the direct ancestor of all our domestic dogs. He is intelligent, social, and a very impressive fighter. Life is tough on the Arctic tundra. There's limited sunlight, not much warmth, and very little food. Your chance of survival is increased if you work as a team. It's springtime, the snow is clearing, and the short growing season is beginning. The reindeer calves have just been born. This mother is nervous. She's seen the wolves. The reindeer break into a run. The pack of wolves is hot on their heels. The Arctic race of life is on. A calf has broken away. The wolves are faster, but the reindeer have more stamina. The she-wolf changes track. Her partner cuts off the calf. It's all over in seconds. The slowest reindeer is down. The wolves have been rewarded for their speed and teamwork. The leader of the pack gets to eat first. This behavior reinforces his place at the top of the wolf hierarchy. His mate will eat next, then the rest of the pack. Wolves have been wiped out in much of Europe and the USA, but they are now being reintroduced in some places with remarkable results. The wolf is the natural predator for large herbivores like elk and deer. When the wolves return to the forest, herbivore numbers are halved. This reduces grazing pressure on the young trees and shrubs. The forest blooms into life. This allows other animals to return, including beavers and foxes. So despite his fearful reputation, the wolf helps every plant and animal in the forest be in balance so they can run their race of life. This white-tailed deer mother has picked up the smell of the wolf pack. She will fight to protect her fawn. The stag moves in to help, but they're safe today. The pack have already made their kill. Wolves guzzle their meat quickly. They go for the soft, highly nutritious parts first, heart, stomach, and kidneys. Then they feast on the muscle. Excitement over the kill can bring out the warrior instinct. This pack comprises a mother and father, their pups and last year's offspring. They're one close family. 
So although the fighting looks fierce, no one will get seriously hurt. The family that hunts together, eats and fights together. And this wolf family is winning its warrior race of life together. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. On a remote island off an island continent lives a bizarre forest warrior. He has strong jaws and sharp teeth and likes to hunt under the cover of darkness. He has become an icon of the ancient forests and valleys. A survivor on this last outpost of wilderness. This is the world's largest marsupial carnivore. He roams for up to 20 kilometers in the search for food and makes his home in holes in the ground. He usually lives alone, but is often seen near others of his kind when there's food or shelter around. And he will use almost any excuse to fight. This is the Tasmanian Devil. They used to roam across the entire continent of Australia until humans wiped them out. Now they are clinging to survival on the island of Tasmania. They're not territorial, the devils will guard almost anything. Devil jaws are an amazing weapon. With teeth like hyenas and a bite force that is the strongest in the animal kingdom. Fighting seems to be their favorite pastime. Tasmanian devils enjoy many kinds of meat, from fresh kills to decaying carcasses. These feisty little balls of muscle are the true warriors of the marsupial world. The Tasmanian devil is a truly unique animal. He is the size of a small dog, but his large head and tail make up half his length. The mountains and valleys of Tasmania echo with blood-curdling screams of the devil. This island is famous for its untouched wilderness and primeval forests. A perfect hiding place for an animal on the edge of extinction. This devil can smell an intruder. His jaw can open as wide as 80 degrees and his bite is capable of crushing bones. His bite is so strong, he can even bite through pieces of thick metal wire. This national park has one of the largest groups of Tasmanian devils. This male can smell blood. It could be a carcass or an injured animal. His large clumps of whiskers help him find his way around in the dark, but they are also part of his adaptation as a warrior. Tassie Devil's whiskers help him precisely locate the face of his opponent. These guys might look stocky and clumsy, but they are precision fighters. Most devils have scars around their faces from many encounters like these. The male has found what he was looking for, a wallaby carcass. He shows no caution as he goes straight for the food. Devils are not fussy eaters. This guy will eat a range of meat from birds, fish and reptiles, as well as vegetation and fruit. But in devil land, nothing comes without a fight. A crazy pattern of fighting and eating seems to be normal table manners for the Tasmanian devil. They very rarely fight to the death, but these stouches enable a hierarchy among the devil community. Our big male is top devil today. The search for food among these mountains and lakes can be hard work. Devils can travel long distances at speeds of 10 kilometers an hour. They are the marathon runners of the Tasmanian wilderness. Sometimes they stop and start as they prepare for an ambush. 
This female can hear other devil calls. Another carcass. This time, there are five devils fighting for a share of the meal. Believe it or not, this is a social event. The fierce noises advertise the fact there's a meal to be had to other devils. The amount of noise indicates the size of the carcass. Fights like this keep the animals in the peak of fitness. Muscles, jaws and high-speed reactions are constantly pushed to their limits. Our female is told to push off. But she won't take no for an answer. If she's not prepared to do battle to eat, then she will not survive. When devils attend these eating frenzies, they are communicating in a complex language. They have 20 different physical postures and 11 different vocal sounds. It might look brutal, but Tasmanian devils are sophisticated fighters with rules and manners. They are complex warriors in the marsupial race of life. One of the most dangerous animals in Africa is famous for his size. He's a menacing presence on the plains and grasslands. He lives among the great herds of herbivores and is most feared for his unpredictable nature. This fierce warrior kills more people every year than lions or leopards, but his main diet is grass. He hides among the tall grasses and reeds, ready to attack at any moment. The Cape Buffalo. These impressive animals can stand a meter and a half tall and weigh nearly a ton. But the reason for their deadly reputation is on their heads. Both males and females have a formidable set of horns. These horns are fused across the base, so they act as sword and shield. Cape Buffalo are a species unto themselves, and they stand alone as the greatest herbivore warrior on the planet. This herd is mostly made up of related females and their young. There is one dominant male who can be recognized by the size of his horns. On the fringes of the herd are the young males. They waste no time getting into training with those horns. They start with play fights. Then the sparring becomes a jousting match to establish a hierarchy. Buffalo have only three main enemies, lions, humans, and the African dry season. They must join the great race of life across the plains to find fresh grazing lands and water. These migrating herds can contain over 2,000 buffalo. They join the vast numbers of wildebeest, zebra, and antelope in the long march to greener pastures. The November rain is what drives these animals to move. The Serengeti Plains near the Norongoro Crater become rich with new growth grass. But by May, the grass is all grazed out and the herds move north towards Kenya's Masai Mara. This is the greatest concentration of animal life on the planet, a true wonder of the natural world. Where there are lots of animals, there are also lots of predators. The only animal that will take on an adult buffalo is the lion. She must be very hungry. She's risking her life by attacking something so large and dangerous. The buffalo has spotted her. The lioness persists. A kick from the buffalo could be a deadly blow. The buffalo must get rid of her attacker before it gets to her throat. The lioness goes straight for the neck. She's done it. This pride of lions have gone for a safer target, a buffalo calf. But they are going to have to fight off a very angry mother. 
This is where those giant horns come in handy. And this is how buffalo kill. The lioness has pushed it far enough. She's not happy, but the buffalo and her calf have won their race of life today. The entire herd is now alerted. They don't want the lions hanging around. It's not worth the risk. The lions back off. They will have to find their meal elsewhere. The buffalo have not only protected themselves, they have protected their young. In this way, the entire herd of bovine warriors wins their race of life. Physical strength has always been a primary force for selecting the animals that will survive to pass on their genes. The great warriors of the wild have become large and strong as a result. From the bears and wolves of the northern forests to the warriors of the sea, the sea lions. The stocky Tasmanian devil is pound for pound as tough as an African buffalo. They have each finely tuned their skills to be winners in the warrior race of life.